Alrighty, with that out of the way, let's start learning JavaScript. So the first of these primitive types we'll talk about is number. Number is pretty self-explanatory. It is a way of storing or representing a number in JavaScript. So other languages have multiple different types for numbers. For example, some languages store decimal numbers differently than whole numbers or integers. But in JavaScript, we have one type of number. It's just called number. That's it. Number works with positive numbers, negative numbers, whole numbers, integers, decimal numbers, which are also often called floats. I'll show you a couple examples. If I open up my console again, I'll pop this out into its own window. I can just enter a number like 13 and hit enter. It doesn't really do anything. The console just tells me, oh yeah, I know 13, here you go. It's not storing it, it's not saving it. I'm just simply referencing a number. So we've got numbers like this, we've got negative numbers, we've got decimal numbers. And because of the way JavaScript stores numbers, there are some important limitations to be aware of. If you ever need extreme precision with your numbers, like you have, let's say something like this. All right, well that works still. But if I keep adding zeros, there we go. I was one zero off. You can see that we lose that entire decimal portion. So it does not store you know, an infinitely precise number, which makes sense. Everything is represented in memory and there is a maximum size for those numbers. Now it's pretty rare that you would come up against this, uh, at least when you're starting out. Most of the time you don't need precision to this point, but it is important to be aware of. Now, while we're in the console here, one other thing you can do that I like to do often is clear my console. It looks like this, clear and parentheses. This is actually something called a function, which we'll talk about later. It doesn't do much except make you space. So you can now type more. Okay, so numbers on their own aren't that useful. Just typing a number and getting it spit back to us is great, but we can't really do much with it until we talk about these basic operations. So with numbers, we have different mathematical operations that we can use, kind of like a calculator, and on their own, without other things in JavaScript, without what we're going to learn later, it really is just a glorified calculator, but it's important to start here. So we have things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And there are a couple others I'll point out in just a moment. But first, I want to talk about these grayed out lines. These are called comments. In JavaScript, if you type two forward slashes in a row, it creates a comment, which JavaScript will just ignore. So these aren't really useful in the console, although I can type them. As you can see here, it just ignores my code versus if I had this without a comment, I get an error. I can recall any line at any point with the up arrow. I can scroll through them. So if I add two slashes to the beginning, it's now ignored. So I use this a lot to write notes. A lot of developers do to explain what they're doing. Here, I'm just using it to give you a label, addition, subtraction, and so on. So we can do basic addition and subtraction, right? Three plus four, shocker, gives us seven. We can do 1.5 plus eight, we get 9.5. We have subtraction, 12 minus 4.567. And we also have multiplication, four times 1.3. Let's do 1.2. 4.8. Cool. I'm going to clear again. Now we have division. Now there's a couple things I want to talk about with division. First of all, it works how you'd expect. 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. Spacing, as you probably already noticed, it doesn't really matter here. I can do 4 divided by 2 like this. I can add space there. It still works. There are definite situations where spacing can be important. And you don't want to do this because it's impossible to look at. It's ugly and confusing. So I would stick to this or potentially that, but I prefer this. And remember, you won't always have perfect precision. Something like 10 divided by 3 is going to give us 3.333333 blah, 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 5, which it makes sense. It, it, we can't store this irrational number where we have a million infinite threes. It's not a million. It's infinite threes. So we get an approximation but just be aware of that. Now there are some other operators. There's one called modulo, which some of you might be familiar with. It's also known as the remainder operator. What it will do is it takes the second operand and divides it into the first, and then it returns the remainder that is left. So two goes into 27. It doesn't really matter how many times, but it goes in 13 times, which gives us 26, and the remainder is one. So we could test it out. We use the percent sign. So let's do 25 mod five. 
Well, it goes in cleanly, so the remainder is zero. Now, if we did 25 mod three, this thing is spoiling it for me. That's annoying. It's giving you the answer already. What about if we did 14 mod four? Think about it. All right, 14 mod four is two. Four goes into 14 three times cleanly, which gives us 12. The remainder is two. So that's modulo. It will come back later. We sometimes use it to determine if a number is even or odd. If a number is cleanly divisible by two, then it is even. And then the other operator I'll show you here is the exponent or exponential operator, which looks like this, two star star. If I do two star star three, it is two to the third or two cubed, two times two times two. Five star star two gives us 25, five times five. And if I did five to the fifth, we get three, one, two, five. So that is one way of doing exponents in JavaScript. There is a different way we'll talk about later, but I just wanted to throw it in here while we're talking about operations. The last thing I'll bring up is that we have the standard order of operations in JavaScript that most of you probably learned in middle school or at some point in school, where in more complicated expressions, different operators get precedence over others. So if we have something like one, let's do three, minus nine times two, we have multiplication, which will occur first. That gives us 18. Three minus 18 gives us negative 15. And we can use parentheses to modify that. Parentheses is the highest or the first part of the order of operations. The way I learned it was PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. I know uh, from one of my other courses, I use PEMDAS in, in other parts of the world. They're taught with different acronyms, but it's generally the same order. So we have three minus nine, that gets done first, which gives us negative six. We multiply that by two and we get negative 12. So you probably won't be doing a ton of really complex mathematical expressions, but if you need to, you can use parentheses and the regular order of operations applies. So that's numbers on its own. Again, right now we're kind of just treating JavaScript as a calculator. I guess it's cool enough to do that, but <laughs> there's a lot more to the language. This is just the basics of numbers. Next up, we'll talk about how we store these and recall them using variables.